Sarang do mukin che, mire do mukin che, kajusu wandende, jairo ke bi wonako para pa, ojig no mu che uke, no mangadu che uke. What does it mean to be oneself authentically? Growing up, I was mainly surrounded by folks that I was similar to in color and culture. Although I could relate to the people around me from an early age, I knew I was different. From the music I naturally gravitated to, the kind of clothes I liked to wear, and the way I wanted to wear my hair, Let's imagine early 2000s MySpace scene hair, <laughs> neon colored party rock glasses with no lenses, super tight skinny jeans, a red Bobby Jack t-shirt, and a way too big neon green jacket, all piled on to a little black girl. There are days I thanked God no one took pictures of that era in my life. The secondhand embarrassment would be enough to lay an elephant to rest. But I look different. And the people around me wouldn't hesitate to let it be known I look different. To be different in the black community has such an adverse effect on your identity. I was bullied by my own family. The loneliness of not being able to completely embrace myself sent me down a spiral down self-hatred and self-denial. I was confused, hurt, and angry at my family for refusing to just let me be me. I can and will write an entire book about this someday. But today, let's talk about Korean pop in my identity. <laughs> I've been an avid K-pop listener since I was nine. And for a large majority of my life, between 2005 and 2016, K-pop was my main source of entertainment. <laughs> there was a day, while on my family computer, I was listening and mimicking one of my favorite, my favorite songs, Lucifer by Shiny. While listening, my cousin and his girlfriend began looking over my shoulder, peering into what I was watching. He asked, <clears throat> what the hell are you watching? It's a Korean song, <laughs> I said annoyed. As I continued to listen and copy the dance moves in the video, I could feel my cousin still watching and confusing. Why are you even watching that? You're black, you don't speak Korean anyway, he snarled. You're always into that weird, 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 weird stuff, 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 stuff. After hearing that my interest in K-pop was considered weird, I gradually became self-conscious about my love of that genre of music. With that statement and multiple questions afterwards from people I thought I could trust did was cause me to really evaluate my social standing within my family and the black community as a whole. I had an identity crisis at like 12. Constantly questioning whether I was black enough simply for my interests not falling in line with what was typical for a black girl at the time. I was the black, black sheep in my family, <laughs> but I wasn't black enough. I believed either or. The monolithic culture of the black community dictated that I listened to Lil Wayne and Drake. I wanted Big Bang and Miss A to wear baby fat and Jordans. I wanted All Star and Gaultier. To be able to dance to the beat, I wanted to dance to the lyrics. I felt it mandatory for me to rebel against 11s and R&B. The way I was perceived as a child and the way people in my community and my family vocalized my being different as something weird and out of the ordinary took a toll on my relationship with the black community. More and more, I wanted to not be associated with black people. So much so that in high school, I had, I had built the mentality akin to OJ. I'm not black, I'm Ashley. I wanted to be as far as possible from what was typical. 
This kind of self-dissection was too much to process as a child and immensely lonely for me. But through the power of YouTube, I it was curbed by seeing other black girls having the same passion for K-pop as I did as a young girl. While watching K-pop music videos and making poor attempts to learn the choreography, a video showed up in the suggestion box. What drew me to the video immediately was the title card. It had a set of black girls around my age. Oh my God. There are black people in Korea. <laughs> Let me pack my bags. Up until this moment, I had never seen another black person openly like K-pop, let alone be featured in a festival specifically for K-pop. As I watched the video of these black girls doing these complicated dances with such passion and precision, I felt a sort of validation. I wasn't alone. I thought back to my cousin calling my interests weird and how I allowed others' perception of me to steal my potential community from me. My resentment for being othered alienated me. The possibility of finding others like me never crossed my mind. Even with this eye-opening revelation, I still chose to walk around brooding in alienation during Morris High School Spirit Week when I heard Tell me, tell me, da, 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 tell me. Recognizing this song, I had to see where it was coming from. It was then I discovered that there was a literal K-pop club. <laughs> How fucking insane. How did I miss that? I joined immediately. A bunch of black and Filipino girls got together and we were weird together. There was a cathartic release of happiness. I felt surrounded by people that didn't think I was weird. A feeling I'd only been familiar with in passing, I was now able to feel. In this club, we did everything I'd been doing for years, from learning Korean to understand what the hell they were saying, to learning complicated dance moves and performing them in front of people. I had the time of my life as time infinitely moves on, and as I become more of an adult, I've been able to accept my natural affinity to learn and involve myself in other, con in other cultures, but retain my love for being black. These two halves of myself make it possible for me to love Anita Baker, I caught up in the rapture of love. Nothing else can compare when I feel the magic of you. The feeling's always new. And to love Super Junior. Sorry, 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 neck and neck and neck and munch on neck and neck and neck and pajo, 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 body, baby. They make me the weird little creature I am today. And as K-pop becomes more Americanized, some hot takes I've had in the past are open to reassessment. One, maybe Drake isn't the worst rapper to ever live. <laughs> maybe not. Two, metallic pants are not a great fashion statement. Three, side-swept frosted tip hair does not look good on me. <laughs> and last, Shiny is and always will be the greatest boy band to ever exist. <laughs> I, I will not debate. <laughs> now in the year 2023, K-pop has had a surge in popularity. Daily, I see young black girls and boys, older black men and women embrace the genre and grow their passion for the art that K-pop can be <laughs> and building a community for themselves around that. The joy I have seeing young girls, no older than I was, embraced for the eccentricities rather than ostracized is the beautiful growth I love about the black community today. 
Although there is no way for me to know all the women and girls I see daily enjoying themselves through K-pop, we are all connected through our collective ambition to shatter the status quo. Thank you.